Hello class. In our studies class, we have seen the numerical based on read verb equation. Now today we are going to discuss about both model of the atom. So the first model of an atom was Rutherford's model. After that, there was certain drawback in that because Rutherford could not explain the existence of spectral line as well as why atoms do not collapse. So Bohr's Neil Bohr came up with this idea about the atoms, making certain changes, and he have given the postulates. The first postulate is an atom consists of massive positively charged nucleus. The electrons are moving around the nucleus in certain fixed circular orbits. So according to him, an atom consists of a highly positive charge present at the center of an atom that we call it a nucleus. And the electrons are moving around the nucleus in certain fixed circular orbits. Without radiating energy, these non-radiating orbits are known as stationary states. Number two, each of the fixed circular orbit or stationary states is associated with the definite amount of energy. So the orbits which are around the nucleus, fixed orbit, we call this stationary orbit, they poses with a definite amount of energy. And hence, the stationary states are also called energy levels. The energy associated with different energy levels increases with the increase in distance from the nucleus. The letters K, L, M, N, etc. or the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. are used to designate the different energy level as shown in figure 2.28. So over here, you can see in the figure. Okay, Outside the nucleus, we have got different circular sort of orbits where the electrons revolve and they have got different energy level. Energy associated with an energy level is given by this relation En equals to minus 2 pi square jd square e to the power 4 m by n square h square, where jd is the atomic number, m and e are the mass and charge of the electron respectively, small h is the Planck constant, and n is the number of orbit. Next, third point was only those orbits are permitted for which the angular momentum that is MVR, formula for angular momentum, of an electron is a whole number multiple of h by 2 pi and is given by the relation MVR equals to mh by 2 pi. So, according to him, only those orbits are permitted where the angular momentum is a multiple of h by 2 pi, where m is 1, 2, 3, 4, and h is a Planck's constant. m and v represent the mass and tangential velocity respectively, and r is the radius of the orbit. According to the fourth point, the energy is emitted or absorbed discontinuously in the form of pointers or small packets only during electron transition. So, there is emission or absorption of energy in a small packet or pointers only during electronic transition that means when an electron jumps from one energy level to higher energy level between two stationary states of energy E1 and E2, say for example. The frequency of the emitter or absorbed light radiation is given by E2 minus E1 that is equals to H mu. This is the expression for the energy emitted or absorbed. Energy is absorbed during an electron transition from a lower energy level to higher energy level. So, when an electron jumps from lower energy level to higher energy level, there is an absorption of energy and it is given by the formula E2 minus E1. Similarly, conversely, light is also emitted. So, when an electron jumps from higher to lower energy, now energy gets emitted. Five point is, fifth point is, since energy cannot be lost continuously, an electron continues to move in a particular energy level. So, there is no loss of energy, that's why the electron continues to move in a particular energy level without losing energy. Such a state of the atom is known as normal or ground state. So, when the electron is present in the particular orbit and when it is not losing energy or gaining energy that is state we call a normal or ground state as an electron cannot radiate energy if no lower orbit is available therefore atom does not collapse so more explain why the atom does not collapse 
On gaining energy, when it gains energy electron from an external source, electron jumps from lower energy level to higher energy level. Such a state of the atom is known as excited state. However, the excited state being unstable, excited electron jumps down almost immediately to lower energy level either directly or in steps by losing energy in the form of light radiations of suitable wavelength. So, when the electron is present in a certain orbit, when it is not losing energy, such a state of the atom is known as normal or ground state. Now, when electron gains energy and in and electron jumps from lower energy level to higher energy level, such a state of the atom is known as excited state. So, we have listed out the main postulates of the Dalton's atomic theory. Now, however, uh, according to the last point, I just want to mention, however, the excited state being unstable, the excited state that means when an electron jumps from lower energy level to higher energy level, Excited electron jumps down almost immediately to a lower energy level, either directly or in steps, by losing energy in the form of light radiations of suitable wavelength. So, when the electron reaches its excited state from lower to higher level, then when it loses energy, and that is possible when the electron jumps from higher to lower energy, so they will emit a light radiation of suitable wavelength. This accounts for the spectral lines in the hydrogen spectrum and atomic spectra of other atoms. So this is the reason why we find spectral lines in the hydrogen spectrum. Now, today's assignment, assignment 12. The first question is state the main postulates of Bose theory. So you list out the main postulates that we discuss and even the equations or the formulas that we have seen. Question number two, write the drawbacks or defects of Bohr's theory. Okay, this thing we have not discussed, I will just discuss it right now. And question number three is state Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Now, the defects of Bohr's model or we call shortcomings. So what is the failure in Bohr's model? Following our few shortcomings of Bohr's atomic model, number one, it fails to explain the spectra of multi electron atoms. So Bohr's theory can't explain the spectra of multi electron atoms it can explain only the atoms having one electron like hydrogen according to Bohr, the circular orbits of the electrons are planar however this is not true and the electrons move around the nucleus in three dimensional space this also was the failure the third is it fails to explain the cause of chemical combination and shapes of the molecule arising out of it and fourth one is one of the major drawbacks of Bohr's theory is that it assumes a definite knowledge about position and momentum of electrons at the same time. So, it could not also explain the position and momentum of electrons at the same time. So, that comes under this one Heisenberg uncertainty principle. According to this principle, it says that it is impossible to measure simultaneously both the exact position and momentum of a subatomic particle such as electron. This statement is known as Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So, for a subatomic particle such as electron, it is very difficult to measure simultaneously the position as well as the momentum. At one time, we can measure only one, either position or momentum, but both at the same time, it's not possible. This statement is known as Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Five, it cannot explain the relative intensities of spectral lines. That was also a drawback. Question number, uh, sorry, point number six. Bohr's theory failed to account for the splitting of spectral lines on the application of magnetic field that we call Gimini effect. So Bohr's theory also could not explain the splitting of spectral line in the on the application of magnetic field with Gimini effect. Now, I've already mentioned the questions for today's assignment. So complete the assignment and send it in my mail.